DreamHack Open is brought to you by Corsair, Monster Energy, Nice Cactus, and GG Bet. A Group A opening matchup that went the way you'd all expect. Furia surviving the very first challenge, and we'll be now shifting our sights into Group B. We will, of course, be beginning with Team Heroic, a team that just recently picked up a win here at the Open Circuit, and they will be facing off the Finnish team, who come by way of qualifier in SJ. Mayak, they gave us gifts. Yeah, they do. They do. They give us uh, hoodies, SJ, uh, which is very much appreciated. Very Christmassy, vibey. I really like that. Uh, maybe I'll wear it with my family for Christmas. Yeah, just bundle might, up. Might just do that. Yeah, I could see you in it already. Do you guys have an uh, ugly sweater holiday? Uh, like luckily, we don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, we don't. Yeah, gonna get away from that one. Yes, of course. <laughs> Stay away from that. Right. So, second matchup, guys. We'll be moving into another one, but I feel like after we've gotten the the uh, Marshall game out of the way, that gap between starts to close a bit. So we'll take a look at the opposite bracket. Group B now begins. As we said, the initial matchup of Heroic versus SJ Gaming, and then a juicy matchup later today in Crazy versus Godsent. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you see, okay, I'm just going to put it this way. No pressure on SJ, no pressure on Heroic. But the format is so that if you lose that game, you're going to play either against Crazy or Godsend. Right. That's going to be a best of three for you to stay alive in the tournament. And this is not a position I'd wish anyone to be in. This is a very stacked group. And the difference between the first game that we had, that was, I'd say, pretty clear cut in terms of prediction. Actually, here, I think SJ, there's a case to make for a, for a potential upset. Definitely so. And I mean, we spoke about it earlier, the competitiveness that all these teams are bringing, especially in these open circles in 2019, you can absolutely see it. And you're right, pound for pound, when you look at these individuals on SJ, there are names that just shine out at you, Yampi and Sadi. These young players from Finland have been in the in the rumor mill for quite some time here. Even rumors of them joining Alexi B's yes, project yes. on OG. That's the thing, this, this Yampi player, okay, I wanna I want to see him play now, because I've heard, you know, I've picked up my little birdies and they were like, maybe he's <laughs> gonna go to OJ, play with him. I'm like, what, who is this player? I don't know him. Then I look at the stats, it's 132 past three months. He's like yep. miles ahead. It's like Zaiwu esque type of difference mm -hmm. with the team. And I haven't seen him, so I'm feeling very flustered, very frustrated. Right. So now it's my time to feast my eyes on Yumpy and see what he can do. The only thing I got to see of him and, and of this SJ roster was that Arctic, Invi uh, Arctic Invitational event in Finland. Um, and they played just one best of three. There was no second bracket. There was It was just you know one round. And it was versus Crazy, mm -hmm. interestingly enough. When Crazy were, sure enough, showing a bit of a crack here and there. So, But they took that to a three-map series. They had them on the edge the entire time. And it was one of those matchups, kind of like what Marshall just had, where at one point they are in control of the game, but then whether that be nerves, whether that be just the chance at a win, you know, they kind of they cracked under the pressure. They and now, again, they're in a difficult group. They're in a very difficult group, but I do believe that they have more of a chance than Marshall ever would. So I'm not writing them off here. They probably did. And I mean, that was the crazy with the with the stronger lineup, with crazy, uh, with Hunter and yeah. Nexa Ooh, in the yeah. lineup. Yeah. yeah, and it went to all three maps, even an OT thrown in there. So SJ might be one of those teams that perform a little bit better on land because online, they're they're uh, currently competing in ESCA Advanced. And sure enough. I think they're in like last place in that online league. So there's certainly a team that aren't turning heads online, but here and there throughout the LAN performances in 2019, they, they, they tend to show up. Again, yeah, you talk about LAN, you talk about experience. Karn and Zade, I think they together combined have been playing Counter-Strike for 175 years. That's, what they, that's how long <laughs> right. they've been playing. Because okay. when I used to play qualifiers in 1946, I used to play <laughs> against them already. And they're here, they're walking around, they've outlasted me. Now, you're I'm really behind the, the desk, but he's there. They're yeah. still playing. So there's a lot of experience. Let's take a look at the map, Vito, and see where this bo one's going to end up. Oh, you want to take that one? I, best of one vetoes to me is always like touching it's weird. what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's usually middle ground. We I say, feel like that's so. why we just blow through it. I know. Yeah. Get I mean, the uh, complexities out of the way and leave us on. here okay. on yeah. Another nuke. nuke. All right. How do we feel about nuke? 
I mean, I think uh, I wrote in my notes that Heroic need to pick Inferno or Nuke into coming okay. into these, this BO1, so I think it definitely bodes well for Heroic. We've seen their Nuke in the past. It's certainly a confidence pick for Heroic. I mean, we even saw such a heavily CT-sided Nuke in the first opening matchup, and it's really dependent on that defensive side. When you've got those optimal crossfires, when you've got the optimal teamwork that Heroic certainly yes. have, it just becomes so, so difficult when you're attacking and trying to get into that inner bomb site. And when we watch DreamHack Rotterdam, Heroic, they used Nuke to get through the group stage. That was one of the maps where they had such incredible variation on their outer yard hits. I mean, if you start just walking, uh, watching the, the differences in their, in their smoke executes outside, I think that that could be where SJ may have their hands full, but I'm not going to be surprised here if SJ have a stellar CT side the same way Marshalk did, right? These are teams, both Heroic and SJ, that play Nuke. Yeah, they're um, they comfortable to do it. That's why we find ourselves here in the BO1. But I'm scared for them because Heroic, in a way, they, they, they do innovate here, right? Snappy makes moves. And he has a team that's very confident and very comfortable on this map in particular. Yeah, I think we need to talk a little bit about this man on the US screen, Esetag. To me, it, it's a story of a resurgence, right? Because at some point, if you are a little bit new to Counter-Strike scene, let me tell you this. Esetag got booted out of the Dainish scene. That was it. He was out, he got removed, he got benched, people were doubting him, distrusting him, and now he comes back into Heroic, and for a few months now, to me, he's one of the most impressive players. He, he played the new roles, he adapted, at some point he had the AWP, now he's back on the rifle. I really like what I see from him, I think it's a great story, and I'm happy to see him perform well right now. For sure, he's one of those well-rounded players that really uh, round out the Heroic lineup, and I mean, Snappy, he was the MVP in Rotterdam. His in-game leading skills on this team is so... Uh, forward and, and having Kadian on his side, it's really shown that Heroic's uh, upward trajectory is exactly because of Kadian and Snappy. And Kadian, what is very interesting with him, and I did play with him for, for a couple of months, he's what I would call a catalyst. So if you have a good energy in the team, yes. if you're in the momentum, if you're feeling the moment, you see him right next to you, and he's going to take you to the next level. He's going to push you, and he's going to take your emotion and make it 10 times harder. So if you're feeling confident, if you feel fired up, he's going to take it. Now, my only question was always, can he weather the storm when things go bad, when things go wrong? That is always a discussion with the emotional player. You say, yeah, it can be yeah, really great. When but it can, exactly, but it can be terrible. They're quiet when they're quiet. Exactly. Now, it's part of the process as a player to, to improve on that. But when you win and you have Kaden with you, sure enough. boy, that does feel good. Yeah, and he pops off and he, and he again, facilitates that energy, something we'd love to do. But let's, let's take it to where there tends not to be energy, and that's in the Finnish camps, right? <laughs> SJ Gaming. Uh, again, a, a Finnish lineup that's looking to make some moves, not Ents, but hot on their heels. And this is the kinds of events. I mean, I remember specifically DreamHack Winter last year was the one that Ents ended up winning. And they came into that event alongside like Bravado Gaming, the South African camp that, uh, and you know, we were kind of like, it was their stepping stone. Well, this is SJ's chance, right? Where were Ents one year after they won DreamHack Winter? Where could SJ be? It's huge questions and, and a huge comparison for me to make, sure enough. But what's, what's nice is they have promise. They've already made waves in, in the tiers of CS that they play. This could be the weekend they take that now step up and above. Hopefully, right? Hopefully. I think one thing that bodes well for SJ, a little difference as a newer team coming into this tournament than Marshalk is. Marshalk hadn't played since early 2018, so it's been over a year since yep. they played. This SJ lineup has been together for over one year now, all playing together, all five of them, just, uh, you know, ra ramping up their skill sets. And, uh, and I think it's going to be a stark difference in, in those two teams, specifically on Nuke. Sure. Let's go back to DreamHack Rotterdam even. I mean, really quickly, just Havu. Havu is another kind of, you know, step beneath finish lineup that we had some level of expectation, but weren't sure where exactly they'd, they'd hit us on the Richter scale. And they came in at a hard nine, you know, like this. So for these guys, I'm, I'm excited and hoping that they can do the exact same. Yeah, and I think Christina is spot on when she says they've been together for a year now. How surprising is that? In a, usually in Counter-Strike, sure in the sub scene, you say, oh, there's too many changes, people don't stick together. Well, they have stuck together. Mm -hmm. They've been together for a year now, and even before that, the core was that like six months together as well. So when you play against this team, what usually happens is that they have a plan, right, from the get-go. They know what they're going to do. This is not going to be funky free Counter-Strike. They have a plan. If it works, it's, it's horrible to play against. But when you can derail them, which I think Heroic will be able to do, if you can disturb them in what they're trying to do, they lack the, you know, the intuitive response to what's supposed to happen. They know how the round is supposed to look like. Okay, we're going to do this tactic. This is going to be amazing. Oh, wait a minute. The smoke is missing. What do we do? And then they right. fall through. So this is where I see the weakness of a team like that. Once they are out of the A scenario, 
they, they like to find solutions. Kind of what we were talking when, when you guys asked Furia, which was a great question as well. You know, was that outer hit, was the secret focus uh, a variation of their game plan or was it set from the get-go? And I think Furia are a team that are super good on the fly. Will the same happen here? Who knows? But listen, Twitch chat, I'm keeping tabs on you guys, all right? You're like the collective <laughs> hive mind, almost like AI learning, I would say. You know, that's the respect I give you. So let's go ahead and get active, baby. Hashtag hero or hashtag SJ in chat to see who will win this one. Because currently the tally's sitting at one point for the three of us and a big old goose egg for you dorks <laughs> in the chat. So let's get active. Let's go ahead and hit it up. And let's see if you guys can get some points up on the board too. You, you managed to antagonize the entire chat yeah. for your first event as a host. I really like that. Let's I respect you. I respect it too, yeah. yeah but let's I, throw hands. The hashtags are not fair. When you see hashtag hero, I want to vote for it. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't even think about the game. Hashtag hero, that's so pumpy. And then you have hashtag SJ, like, all right. <laughs> I would give you SJ. <laughs> Thanks. You get that. Oh, man. I'm excited to see Jampy. You touched on it very, you know, kind of quickly, and we, we haven't really focused the conversation on him, but you're right. That was where the conversation between him and OG, that was going to be a huge move. That was like Brokey to FaZe. Exactly. That was, mm. you know, that was Rops to Mouse Sports. This could have been it, and yet here he is with the team, as you said, that's been together for a super long time. So the odds still to the favor of Heroic, and that's fair. They've got proven LAN victories as of late. They've got good performances underneath their belt. They will be moving on to Odinza as well for the Pro League Finals. And this is just another stepping stone in that direction. So very much the same way we touted Furia as having to come in and make waves from the get-go. Do you both agree with me and say that Heroic should do that too? Uh, definitely so. I mean, I think Heroic, I, we heard them talking about in the interviews in Rotterdam. When they're coming now to these Opens, when they're attending these tournaments, they have nothing else besides the first place in their mind. And if we think back just a couple months, even back further than that, they were coming into these tournaments thinking they were the underdog, thinking they could uh, steal away a map, steal away a series. Now they're the heavy favorites coming into these tournaments. And I think mentally, something's shifted in this Heroic side, and you can absolutely see the confidence within that server. So my question to you then, Potter, is are you willing to predict them as the winners of this matchup? Yes, yes, I absolutely am. I think Heroic should be able to win this one. It's a best of one. So I think uh, we saw earlier how scary best of ones can be, uh, especially coming out from a team coming from the underdog position. But Heroic, they shouldn't be too nervous about this one. They should be able to seal the deal. Sure enough. And Matthew? Yeah, I really like how you ask this question so ceremonial. Will you be able? Yeah. <laughs> Will you accept? Do you? The pressure. Do you? Take here. me <laughs> take as your Heroic. lawfully ledded host. <laughs> yes, I, yes, I do. Connor, yes I do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I think Heroic, considering the map pool as well, I mean the map, they can play the T-side of me. I'm not scared for them. Even if they have yep. some cracks on the CT side, uh, we said it. anything else in the grand final for me would be a disappointment. I'm sure they are aware of it. So this starts now and I will have Heroic as my favorite. Sure, I'm going to take a bit of a risk with this one. Now we're talking. I like now, it. Okay, yeah, this is it. I like it. I'm, I'm taking notes. This I'm is when throw, it went uh, down. Let's, let's throw an SJ prediction up here. Let's do it. I this think is that's, the match uh, to do that. Exactly. Yeah. It is, it's, one of those, it's one of those kind of curveballs. It's going to give me that, that step ahead if I, have to, if I have to nab one early. And I do think that Nuke is a good place for them to be playing here. But again, I have super high hopes for, for Heroic. I don't think this will be an easy matchup for SJ in any regards whatsoever. Still an upset. Twitch chat, are you with me? I bet they are. Absolutely. Oh, hold on. This is much closer. Do you actually than I control? Do you actually control? Yeah, I've got the, all the buttons stat, down is it here. You make it, okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna give myself fifty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm voting underneath the desk when no one's watching. Talking to production, can you please just make it? Yeah, <laughs> that's a tight one though, and I think it's fair. Um, I, I do think it is fair. I think that is still very much skewed by the memes. Uh, you know, fins, fins are out all there right. in full force. It's kind of like what I expected with the Brazilians behind Furia, but their time zone's behind us. They were sleeping. Yeah, 100%. So uh, there we have it. That's me and Twitch chat on the side of SJ, you guys on Heroic, and I think uh, you should feel safer, but I do think we have a chance. It, listen, here is why I'm feeling very safe. We just had this whole segment, and never did we mention Stavn from Heroic. Right. And yep. he is probably the main, the heavy hitter from that lineup. It's almost a given now. Yeah, right. That that's gonna, the thing. We, yeah. we we said why they would win and how the map would probably advantage them, the experience, Caden, and all that. And then I'm thinking to myself, maybe we should mention Stavn, which is absolutely yep. impressive. And every time I see him play, I think he's one for the future. Definitely. If I had to pick one and say yep. he's going to have a great career for sure, maybe in Heroic, maybe it's going to go to another team after that. But that would be the one. He's like, he's very young as well. 
and somehow he plays a very mature Counter Strike, which is always the perfect combination. You don't want to be the other way around, like an old player having no idea what you're doing. He's like young, but he knows what he does. So yeah, a very interesting player to watch, and I'm looking forward to spectate him. It's definitely the heavy hitters. I mean, you mentioned it perfectly. It's the Stav and Borup show, I think, for this heroic side. And I mean, it, it, it really is a testament to have two players that, that are able to, to be put on a pedestal. I mean, all of these players on Heroic with Essa Tag and Kadian and Snappy, they set these two youngsters up for success on a consistent basis, especially on that T side. They allow them the freedom and a little bit more mobility than, than most. And I think it really, really bodes well for, for those two youngsters. Sure. And I think them specifically, like, you know, we go back one year from now, you, you, you kind of had them competing still at this level of CS, but I wouldn't say in such a polished state. If anything, that's what we've had these, these three experienced players add to them in this lineup, right? Borup was with Tricked at the time, and he was making waves in the online CS world. We had, I, I would say, Stavin being the most successful from that uh, originally Team Fragsters. Oh, yeah, Fragster, right. Disbanded, and then, you know, you think of where do those pieces end up? Well, I think he's found himself primed more than anybody else on that lineup. Um, you know, refresh to Cloud9 maybe wasn't the move. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to take a successful team in Counter-Strike, it's like such a complex recipe, right? It's trying to make a meal, like one out of a thousand times you're going to succeed. First, you need Snappy to come back and finally have the respect and the trust from his teammates. He's been also booted out of the Danish team for a while. He comes back. You have Estetag, as we said, who kind of had his resurgence, finding back his confidence. Kadian as well, going back to the scene. Then Staven is flourishing. So many different factors need yes. to be put together to be competitive. That is the level of Counter-Strike right now. And also, it's a very cruel word in the sense of we're sitting here saying, oh, they won Atlanta, that was great. But how are we going to talk about them if they go out in group here? That would Absolutely. be it. Yeah. That would be it. You, you, people will give you a chance to kind of sit at the big boys table, yep. but they would take it away from you very quickly. They've actually had a very nice trajectory. Again, first A, qualifying for the Pro League Finals. The week after, they're in Rotterdam. They have a great showing. They get to the finals, but fall to crazy, who you still had mm. to say, like, sure, they had the recent addition of ships, and you had Emmy coming in as a, as a, as a first-time in-game leader, playing as opposed to being coach. And that was an improvement, but they didn't take it over the line. As you just said, Mathieu, they go ahead and win in Atlanta. One further step in terms of progress. If, if they can bag this one and then move forward to their next event in, in a week from now, this is just the natural progression, the natural stepping stones, I think, poise heroic as being, a, as being the favorites. And I think it, it's a really testament to how the, the players went through so many trials and tribulations. You mentioned, you mentioned Esetag having so many different roles. You know, we think back on Kadian and his history and Snappy and his history, as you mentioned. All these players have had so many trials and tribulations of trying to make things work, trying yeah. to put the pieces together, trying to make sure that their team is able to produce some results. And this heroic lineup, all of a sudden, have been able to make that work, have been able to find the recipe and the answers. And I think the most exciting thing about this heroic lineup, we haven't seen the best versions of them. I think their skill ceiling is still very high. They haven't reached it yet, and they're just consistently climbing their way up each event that they go to. You know, that's a really good analysis of both them and a couple of guys I know. Harry and Hugo, are you boys with us? We yes. never last. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> all right, you haven't moved at all. Glued to the seat, Hugo. I like your style. Boys, where, uh, which camp are you putting your vote into here? Are you, are, you, are you coming to the dark side? I like your curveball, Connor. I'm, yeah. I'm a Yampy fan myself, and, you know, super yimmy, super Yampy, more like. I'm, I'm jumping on the finish side of things. <laughs> Harry? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to stick with the uh, the two analysts here. I think <laughs> they right. know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, they, they've been around the block, and so I'm, I'm going to side with Heroic. I, I think as well, you know, you look at recent trends, the Danes are looking good. Yeah. Sure enough. So enjoy this one, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you very much, Connor. Yeah, this is uh, this is exciting, though, Hugo. I'm really looking forward to this. We get to see Nuke again, right? We obviously just had that on our screens. We get to see it for a second time. And uh, I'm really excited because I kind of fall into a similar situation as, as the guys over on the desk. And that is with a player like Gampy. I've heard all these really, really good things. I've seen all these highlight clips. But personally, I've never... I felt, well, not never, but I felt like I, I don't really know this guy as well as perhaps we should, considering some of the uh, the conversations we've been having around it. Yeah, relatively young, relatively inexperienced on, on a you know a high tier professional level, even if you look at the, the open circuit, right? So there's plenty of room for him to grow. And I think that's one of the exciting things about, uh, about some of these young players, right? Not even just on the uh, finish side, but also with players like Stown that was mentioned by Maniac. I mean, this is a guy that is so young and despite that has so much experience. And, and I can't wait to see that you know, be put to the test here on the stage in Sweden. Uh, the chance for these two Scandinavian rosters to, yeah. uh, well, battle it out. The the, the man I, I always love seeing is over on this heroic side, and that's S-Tag. I'm really glad yeah. that he got some, some discussion over on the desk. 
I, I, I've followed him throughout his whole road to recovery, right? Coming from being removed from Heroic that first time around, then going back in and having to... And that's the kind of been his story. It's like being removed from the Danish scene, getting brought back in. Oh, you've been made to play this role. Oh, we'll bring you back in. Oh, you've been made to play this role. S-Tag, he really has resurged. Can the rest of Heroic uh, continue in that fashion? Can they keep up these strong appearances? Or are Super Jimmy going to be giving them a run for their money? We're getting into Nuke. The second map of the day, and SJ, they're starting off over on this T side. Yeah, a bit of utility and full armor for Heroic. We're going to see these keys go towards the yards. Down. He's playing that smoke, and he's realized that there's no one going down towards that B site. It's only a fake that allows Heroic some room to free up to watch yard. We've got Kadian and S-Tag keeping an eye on these positions. Oh, Kadian thinking onto Sadi, but S-Tag getting domed first blood, found by the man in question, Jampy, down towards that B bomb site as SJ do run the gauntlet. Oh, and Snappy getting into this corner. Are oh, they going to be ready for it? He actually repositions now, getting into a spot where he can Ooh. take these engagements and then just fade away. And that's exactly what he's done. He's slowed this push down. He will then oh, get sandwiched. My. That there is uh, a sight to behold. SJ going to turn this one on its head. And it's the uh, the young gun, the man that we've wanted to see so much. Jampy starting this off with a 4K in the pistol round. I'm already not disappointed. I hope Nati's watching and just rubbing his hands together at the prospect, right? What a, what a round from Yampi. That was uh, nutty stuff with the P250 down on B. And Heroic, they have a 64% win percentage on, this, uh, on, on pistols on this map. Far higher than that of SJ. So impressive to see already that first round falling under their feet. Quick vent dive coming out here in round number two. And Sadi going to get an opening kill as well on the top site, spamming through that smoke. On top of that, having a man down in vents is going to make problems for Heroic as they might have to rotate someone down, but they've not exactly got the numbers to do that. And Arvid will just continue to lurk in the depths below. And just having that pressure, that foothold down here, causes chaos for Heroic. Now send Stown down to go hunting for Arvid here. Over in Decon, Arvid might just catch the timing. Actually, might not matter because the rest of these kills have come in over a round. That bomb was dropped in the process. That's a huge kill from Sadi to bag as now he falls back with the bomb on his back. A three on three and uh, a chance for SJ to recover this round. Here's that ramp flank though, here's that vent dive that came through at the beginning of this round. Arvid finally going to be able to activate, but S-Tag's reading it. He gets tagged down to one HP. Molotov could end him and he peeks out and the MAC-10 will do it instead. A path paved down towards the lower bomb site here, but Stown has moved himself in. They will check the corner, but only a dink from Stown will not be enough. Even though there are low players for SJ, it's Kadian with a scout in a one on three. Likely just going to be a save here or exit to the very most. You are not winning this round if you're Cadian. And despite that getting a little bit scary with the bomb getting dropped and an initial advantage taken for Heroic, SJ are able to close it out. A couple of crucial kills from Arvid down on that uh, lower flank. And I like that as well, right? He gets down to... Ooh, nice. No, uh, no save either. He gets down towards B in the start of the round and he doesn't do anything until that three on three. He makes no noise. He makes you know no contact, gets zero kills and waits for the right time to strike. And that's good patience from SJ. Yeah, I think, you know, coming into this event, one of the things that SJ are going to have is quite like a unique feel uh, as to how they come into this. You know, they, they know that the world has kind of had their eye on this roster now for a little bit, largely because of those uh, Jampy kind of discussions that were going on. And I think coming into this event, they're really going to want to showcase exactly why they've got so much attention right now, you know, why these names are being spoke about. And I think if you're able to start things off by taking a team like Heroic down, then uh, you've, you've really kind of justified why it is that we've been looking for these names all of a sudden, right? And I, I like this SJ roster. It's like a mix of new and old Finnish talent, right, from across the board. Obviously, you've got like some of the boys from the old Ents days, the old iGame days, things like that. And oh, then wow. you've also got the uh, the, the newer set of uh, Yampi and uh, and Sadi in there as well. Yeah, I remember my second LAN I ever casted. Uh, I'm pretty sure Zati uh, was playing on, uh, was it iGame? It might be a different roster, but they won that event. And uh, Zori as well is a name I'm, I'm sure you yeah, remember, yeah, the Finnish yeah, yeah. Warper. He was in that team. Man, real throwback, but 
still here, still alive, and more than kicking right now with a two-round lead and a man advantage. Snappy on top of the hut getting dropped. That's a team kill. A little awkward, but only the Max 10 gone, and it shouldn't be a problem as these USPs are trapped to the back of the site. Nice kill from Borup. They won't expect s tag here. That's the only thing going for him, but missed shots to the PC50, and you only get one chance. He's dead as well. It's a 3-0 lead for the Finns. Yeah, good start here. And now a, uh, a pause called on in, looking like it's actually technical while Cadian drops from the server. I was wondering if, you know, we were going to see the tactical heading into this first buy round, but that is not the case. We'll get this one fixed. We get to see now what this CT side from Heroic is made of. And uh, we should even have the cash for that AWP to come out right over in the hands of Cadian. That's going to be pretty important to bring that out nice and early. As well as that, with this team, one of the little perks that you do have is you're not shy of players who can pick up that AWP over yeah. on the heroic side. S-Tag perfectly viable with it. Stown as well. We've seen him have clips of that gun before. And I kind of like Heroic sort of shuffle that second orb between those two players. Yeah, More often yeah. on Stown than S-Tag, but it's nice to see that, you know, at the end of the day, well, it does come down to Matt, positions, is, it comes down to feeling. This is what I was saying, like, following this S-Tag story has been great. I, I really wish, like, him as a player would maybe open up about, you know, how he feels his career's gone a little bit more. Because I'd love to know, like, what, what he kind of did in between... That, that time period where it seemed like he was down and out of the Danish scene. Because from watching it from an outsider's perspective, it really seemed like a story of a man finding his confidence, finding his place and getting, getting you know, more belief in what it was that he was doing. Because it did feel like when he moved into these teams early on in his career, he was just put in like the roles that were left over. It was like, oh, well, you know what, S-Tag, yeah, we need Norpa. So not really your job description, but you're on that. And, and you know, I think back then he didn't have the, 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 the like, the, the portfolio to fall yeah. back on and the confidence to say, well, actually, use me like this. This is how I work best. And now we see he's a lot more vocal. He's always talking. He always seems chatty. So it really does seem like confidence has been key for him. Important to see those mollies go down early towards door. Super Jimmy have been pushing Arvid down the vents in back-to-back -back rounds. So didn't want that to happen again considering he had the spawn, but he went topside towards a silo instead. SJ deciding to slow the pace down into this first rifle, knowing that Heroic will have utility, but all of that almost gone here in the 30-second mark. Grenades into the door, and Borob setting up to go down towards B. SJ have yard control, and they have the smokes down to get down into that lower site. No one here to stop them. Zate with an opening kill through the smoke into that A site. Certainly not how Heroic wanted to kick off that round. S-Tag, the man you mentioned, getting dropped before he could do anything about it. And now SJ with a man advantage and a B site open for the taking, they're gonna wander through. Yeah, the only man nearby is Borup on this rotation, nice and early, right, set up down towards this B side of the map. He uh, is someone that we've noted we should be keeping an eye on. So this would be a great time to show us why. And Borum delivering right now, two kills. They peek on into him. And finally, that double peek from the two different angles there will yield the kill for SJ. But at least Borup has converted this back into a three on three. Now even odds, stripping that man advantage away from the Finns. Oh, they're considering the top site. They're going to go up the vents. kadian has got the AWP in heaven, but he's watching outside right now. He needs to come back in. There's a player on the huts down, dropping one. The trade is in, and Cadian's dropped the bomb as well. It's Caron alone in a one on two. He's got the chance for a plant here. 10 seconds. He's lost the bomb. It's hidden in the body. He can't see it, and Cadian will take him down. That is so unfortunate. I think it must have been the dead body hiding that bomb's position. And when you're in a position like that, you don't want to be staring at the minimap, trying to work out where it is. You want to be looking at your crosshair for the kill. And SJ, they go back up into that A site, into their own doom. That could have been around, but taken away. The worst thing about those moments, right, is, is like you say, you want to be focusing on the cross set. And in the end, it often just feels like you kind of half ass both options, yeah. looking at the map and looking at the cross there. And then you don't win in either regard. So it all falls apart there for SJ at the very, very end. Cadian with this AWP now, taking Whoa. it outside. Going to miss that opportunity. Onto Yampi as he does dodge death for the time being. Sadi's gotten back through the vents, and that's in spite of Stown being like at the vents. He must have no idea as well, because he's been watching the smoke and he has a shotgun. That would have been conned. He would have reacted to it. So right now, unknown positioning from SJ, and that can be so valuable on a map like Nuke where you could get that ramp flank coming in. Borup has just dropped down vents though. You can see he's very much not aware that there could be someone here, but luckily he is 
Not up for danger, not yet. Sadi could come in on this flank. And once they spot Borob, he's playing a pixel angle. He's trying to get info and fall back. Once he does, he's going to walk into Sadi. So this could be his death very quickly. Yeah, they wait all round for that to come in. And it's with quite terrifying results. Heroic suddenly throwing in to a retake down at this B side of the map. And they're currently sat a man down. They're going to wait, see if Kadian can find anything. But with no kills coming in, do they even want to go for this? They've got an auto shotgun. It's very, very mismatched. An AWP in the retake, a shotgun in the retake, and a very, very long angle to come in from, right? Moving in through the ramp room. Stown's going to hang around with that auto, uh, with the auto, but that will be it. The other two are going to try and hold on to these rifles. Looking like they should get away with them at the very, very least. But it's still this uh, this fourth round on the board from SJ. This is where I think Heroic, pretty important that we see them do something about this vent player that keeps on getting down into B. Yeah. That time there, he was just completely unknown. And that unravels the entire round before it can even begin for Heroic. Yeah, multiple times uh, SJ have, have got to play down vent and Heroic not only having no info, but you know not, not getting rushed for that vent player to do anything. They can just come into play later in the round. And, and yeah, it's nice to see SJ using these vent positions uh, to their advantage. So 4-1 up on the T side. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing as well, right? Is, is you think about how that B bomb site plays into a map like Nuke, and it is a point of rotation, right? Like, it's not uncommon to see players drop vents or go through ramp to hold on to that B site, to hold outside. And so if you get a player down there, if you get someone down there with no idea, you can just catch those rotations and use that to get man advantages at very, very little risk to yourself. So this round here, few smokes going in towards this A side of the map. That one's fallen to once again allow a player to cross down toward that vent. And you can see how many players Heroic are dedicating to watching for this vent play. They, they just know it's been a problem for them. Stowns on top of the hut, we got Borup you know, uh, jiggling on the smoke, just really trying to make sure that no one has gotten behind enemy lines, but a boost eventually coming up to get Borup back up into the rafters and Stown can still hold this position with no more smokes down towards the door. Only one left of the T's and that's on Zarte, Caron. Moving through the yard, Kadian's come secret side, and that will be his kill every day of the week. He's now the ramp split comes through. Great shot from Jampi at the back of ramp, and now taking control down towards that B site. Oh, Kadian, it just feels like he's everywhere. He rotates back from secret and strikes another from the tally. Keeps the advantage up in favor of Heroic, albeit briefly. Gets away with the tag, even onto Jampi. Auto shotgun comes in, and now Arvid. And the AWP for SJ left standing, but that is it. Two versus three. That man advantage that they worked so hard Ooh. to maintain has been stripped away from them. And now Yampi, the last man left, flashed off the angle, has to give this up. Time's ticking away, but they're still not on this bomb. Oh, they're going to tap it. They're going to stick it. They're sticking this defuse. Yampi's got to deal with it here and Ooh. now. And as he swings out, he's not quite able to connect. Heroic, they make the retake happen. I'll get that second on the board. Yeah, opting not to take that secondary AWP though. Borob had an opportunity, he didn't grab it. So just sticking with the one for the time being with the shots Acadian's hitting, fantastic idea. He uh, nails two in that round and takes the advantage as well for Heroic in that five on three. SJ unable to convert the post part. Now they've got another buy, but no warp on Yampi. To another lobby play, a default on this T side. Heroic have been keen to take yard control, and S Tag's doing that here and now. The grenade, however, shows that SJ are expecting that, and he'll just opt to fall back. Zarte playing with fire here. And SJ just hoping for Heroic to make a mistake, to get aggressive, to feed them a frag, but that won't be happening right now. What is Snappy watching for? I'd love to know. Ah. Setting up some smoke. Is that going to land on top of the light or, or something? I, I, let's keep an eye on this. Let's come back to this. Maybe he'll do it later. It would be very snappy to have come up with some gross little, uh, like, one way towards yeah. outside. I'm all for it. He's got the smoke in hand now, so we might see that go through. But he's just waiting for outside control, and that's where this round is going to end up. SJ is setting up yard smoke, so Snappy, he's going to be in a very important position to get something done. That being said, SJ not committing behind the yard smokes. It's just a close one from Snappy to make sure no one gets down towards B, but that isn't the intention from SJ. They're going for a top side play. 
Yeah, the moment the smoke dissipates, they were hoping to go through, but Borup dropping that. That if, if they wait, there's going to be about 10 seconds left, right, as they get into the site. So they've either got to change their mind or they've got to go through that smoke. And so they try and hit Ramp Room. They try and get past KD and he'll get away with the first man and fall back into the B-bomb site. Borup has found another in the meantime. 15 seconds and they go into the moors of Snappy one by one. They feed him up. And it's only Zati left. He's alone. Five seconds left on the clock. He's going to try and hold on to the AK. Heroic. They'll take this third round flawlessly. That's such a nice play from Heroic as well. That, that smoke timing pretty much wins in the round, right? That A play could have been fantastic for, for SJ. They had Caron actually on top of the main roof, ready to drop in through Mini at the same time that split came through. But a re-smoke and SJ realized they can't go through it. They just have to rotate or they're walking into a three-man stack with no uh, info at all. So third round taken from Heroic and they're starting to get into the swing of things here in this first half. One gun on Zarte, not going to look to drop down through the vents, but will try and take a fight to main. It's now bringing an engagement back. That grenade is good, though. Zarte's going to get dropped. The one rifle in this round removed. And although it can be retrieved, no one else has armor. So there's always that question mark as the gun gets dropped over to Sadi. And I mean, really, you just got to hope he, get a, he gets opening kills here. Otherwise, your chance of doing anything in this round is down to nothing. Yeah, I'll try and take the fight outside, but this is where Cadian Zorp is, and I, I would not want to be on the receiving end of that any time soon if I'm SJ. And so they will concede that outside control. They decide against it on the back of spotting no one there. They're taking this round very, very slowly. They're trying to burn out as much utility as they can from this CT side, right? You want to force as many reinvestments as humanly possible. And so even if it is that extra thousand dollars into the nades, that can make all the difference, right? At shaping this matchup for SJ, oh. but it's the mow down at ramp. Oh, aim punch there, gonna be the uh, the downfall of Sadi with the AK. Another round on the board for Heroic. They'll tie this up four to four, but now we've got that buy coming in from the Finn. And okay, yeah, right, we're, we're seeing the Krieg increase the price and it, it, it is showing less Krieg in. That is true and that's a positive, but the one thing that isn't a positive for SJ is that Heroic have three AKs. That is, uh, yeah, pretty brutal. Those guns can be extremely useful on the CT side. Smoke's being set up for the yard again here for SJ in this round. But it's going to be met with some conflicting aggression. Borup going outside as well. Actually going to choose to back off as the Molotovs land in mini as well. Arvid's down B very fast. Kadian Ooh. has just missed that timing. He doesn't know as well. So Arvid, he passes that information off. There's, there's someone in the secret. And now his team coming through the yard should be aware of this. They actually open the doors at the exact same time as well. So Kadian doesn't know about the man in the back. But that might not matter. He'll take two down to the grave with him. And the rotations have already come in. yankee has gone through the smoke as well. As Borup puts another on the board. Arvid finally coming in from this wrap. Gets a kill for his trouble. Gets away with some damage from this fast B play, but it's still the 2v2. And Stown is repositioning Ooh. towards outside. Sadi on the other side. And who sees who first? It's a standoff here. Oh, it's cat and mouse. And it's unclear as to who is the cat and who is the mouse at this point in time. They've just missed each other once again. It's ring around the roses. It's down. Oh. Just doubting himself to go for the main check. And this has allowed them to get that bomb into the A site. Right now, Heroic have no information on this. Yeah, they're just going to have to retake. They've got a kit on Stown, and that, that is something useful. But this has turned so favorably, favorably for SJ. Heaven plant with a heaven position. Heroic, do they read this? They're not going to see the bomb plot out in the open, so that should be some info as one player climbs up the vents. S-Tag waiting for Stown to make contact as well so they can go in together. The smoke is there down in door. It lets him get up. But Arvid waiting for the timing to strike. He spots a player. Doesn't want to die. He may as well let his, uh, bait his teammate for the win at this point because you do have heaven. That's such a valuable position. Throwing out flashes to help Sadi get a kill on this cross. And that he will do. Stown is dead. And Arvid goes out wide. A round for SJ on this T side. And they are full of them. 5-4 to the Finns. Oh, and now a pause called on in. A tactical one from Heroic. 
They want to try and figure out exactly what's going wrong, right? That round there, it felt like all the pieces of the puzzle were in place. They deal with that secret play. Kadian was in a lot of danger, right? They knew he was in secret. That had been calmed by Arvid. He does a great job of at least making his death worthwhile, right? He takes down a lot of players, delays the push. And then it gets a bit unfortunate in the mid round for Heroic. It all kind of falls apart. They've adjusted well to what's been going on in the beginning, right? They, they've mitigated a lot of this danger that SJ were throwing in early with players getting down the vents, but now it's cropped up once again as another problem for them to deal with. So this round, you know, at least you've got the full buy coming into it. You've got those Molotovs. You can deny that fast vent play. And they will be going in now. Kept the fins from the vent for the time being, but maybe they should be worried about another one lurking in the shadows outside. Oh, Yappy's just getting through. The orb shot misses for Kadian, and Yappy's going to go hunting for it. He wants to take this gun out of action, but Kadian will not let him. The A split not coming through. It's a vent dive after they kill the main player. It's a great call for SJ getting down into this, into this B site, knowing the player tasked with holding off that position is already gone. Snappy has rotated down, though. Molotov to try and deny the bomb plant. They can go for an open plant with the smokes cutting off these lines of sight but a man advantage for Heroic on the retake is exactly what they need. Bomb has been planted. Down, spotting Zarty over in the vent, getting away with some damage. Arvid's now going to try and come in and take up this crossfire with his teammate. They lose a man down towards the double doors and Stown is just waiting ever so patiently for these peaks to come in. His teammates from Ramp are clearing the bomb site in the meantime. And I think Stown, with his rather large brain, has pieced together exactly where Arvid is, right? They've cleared every other avenue on the map. And so this flank that's coming in now has to do it all. And Kadian is already on the angle, primed, ready for another kill. And Heroic, they'll take that one. They make the retake happen. Yeah, really patient play from Stown as well. I love to see that, you know, just not rushing the kills, knowing his team can clear out the site and get on the bomb if needed. And he doesn't need to uh, necessarily go and die because if he dies or if he takes that fight early and gets picked up by the crossfire, there's a chance that SJ can just play the bomb in that two on two. And that would have been another round on the seaside. Heroic don't want to give away too many here on a map that you would feel is Danish favored just by nature. More nades early into A, SJ now out of cash, out of luck and on the pistols. They have crossed, that's something, but Kadian is watching for this with the AWP from Hell. Not got a great angle to get multiple kills though, will only be able to get info and, and maybe a one shot off if he's quick. But SJ, they might be able to get players down towards B with this setup. So Kadian is in a very, very filthy position, right? Like this is one he's not dying. Uh, yeah, that, and that, that's what's so great about it. You get the information, the only thing that can challenge you really is like an AWP or a Krieg, and they are just absent in this round, right? Being up against the pistols. So this is a nice measured approach from Kadian, knowing what they're going up against in this round. They deal with S-Tag over in Mini, but this is where the rest of the right falls are just oh. gonna pick up the pieces. And it's a bit of a spray down over in Main. Heroic are gonna take the lead, they'll go 6-5 up as they make quick work of that eco from SJ. I think Bora people got a kill through the wall to outside of main there. So yeah, just add it to the tally, I guess. Three kills coming in left and right. And the eco is nice and quick. Guns coming back into the hands of Super Jimmy and no AWP either. So that's a bit of a shame. Ooh, double volley in mini from the T side. They won't be playing off the back of it though. The slam is good. They know it's kept down back into position, so they will be able to put him down low. Grenade, minimal damage from it. KD gonna stick outside behind red. Sadi, he's gotten down vents with the help of that double Molotov and the damage guns popping up heroic, but I'm sure they're aware of the possibility this time. They have to be. They have to be thinking there's someone down on B. Orb gonna get bogged down out to Stown's hands, and Heroic gonna send the players to look out for Sadi. Sadi just lives in the vents, man. He's got, he's got a timeshare at this B bomb site, and he is using that to his full advantage. Once again, it's just the threat of a man being here that has divided oh. this hold from Heroic and cut them in two. Now with all these players spotted over at ramp moving in, Borup is not at all ready for that man who's been spat down from the vents all round long. Sadi's gonna double up, and with it, that should be the round solidified. Kadian and Stown gonna try and hold on to the AK and AWP. 
And SJ, once again, it's that vent to be play that gives them so much success in this rifle yeah, round. I, I've never seen a game where it, it's been so prolific in, in how the T's are using it as well, right? Xadi waiting and Bob running down vent and, and running into Decon there. You know, with the last call he's heard is they just came out B. They're not going to be the doors yet. Well, sadly, has been there all goddamn round long, Bob. So, yeah, Hero just getting caught on rotation once again. It's been all too familiar territory here on the CT side. And even though they have 6-6, which is not a bad scoreline, that could change in a matter of seconds. This T side is really getting built up right now by the Finns. And they're not done just yet, Harry. More money in the coffers for both sides. And I think as well, the fact that they've been throwing him down the vent in the mid round has what started to cause some problems for Heroic, right? They're putting all that utility in early because usually if you're going to go for a vent drop, it is at the start of the round, right? Before those CTs get into position. Oh, hang on a minute. This might be the complete change of pace. Instead, no, they blow that door open. They try and find an opener through it. Ooh. But instead, it's a uh, bit more of a measured approach, at least initially. That Molotov has kept them at bay. Smoke now goes in, but this time Kadian gets ahead of it. And you've taken Sadie out of the round. So, uh, Sadie out of the round. You, you now know there shouldn't be anyone down those vents toward B. Yeah, they've even put someone in it. First time we've seen that. Uh, a good call from Heroic, but maybe too late. A little too late. Horror jumping up and above. He'll get his kill. Arvid almost capitalizing, but couldn't hit the model that was moving up and above. And five on three. This is a pitch perfect round for Heroic so far. What is going to be the solution here for SJ? They've got Karen outside, but he's sitting 0 and 8, Harry. He has yet to grace the scoreboard with a kill. As one of the more experienced players on this roster, you know he's not just bringing his ca fragging capabilities, but you'd hope that they would appear at some point in this game. I mean, now be the time for it, right? If you're ever looking to break the drought, if you're ever looking to put your first on the board, this three on five is the time to shine. To be fair, this A site is super weak right now. There's only two players here. Or one player, rather. Cadian's playing, you know, rotate with the AWP. So he's just gone towards ramp, but he's got a jiggle between two positions. And there's only that hot roof player. If they get this opening kill, this could be the round. Uh-oh. Yeah, they will deal with him. It's the other man up on the rafters. I was wondering if he was going to have any impact, but no, Stout is cancelled out almost immediately. Wow. S-Tags followed up one-two as well. And Karen breaking that... Uh that Drought getting his first kill, and it's a very important kill to find on that fast rotation up through the vent. More nade damage even done onto Katie, and Snappy was lining up that flashbang to try and give him the peek, and they're still going to go for it. It's risky, and Kadian decides against it. He'll back out of the round. Once again, a save for Heroic. SJ going to find themselves back in the lead now as they chain together a second. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. The reason that Heroic only have two players on that A site there is because they had to change the setup coming into that round. They put Kadian in mini with the AWP at the start, and that just leads them to having no outside control. As a result, they need two players down on B, just in case there's a cross towards Secret or a, or a sneak down vent, as usual. And, uh, well, with two on B, you can only have two on A, assuming there's still a float player, and that was Kadian. So, yeah, Heroic, I mean, you'd, you'd hope they could get a kill out of that defense, at least one with the two Rafters players, but nothing coming through and fantastic entries coming in from Yampi and Caron to swing that three on five back in the favor of the Finns. SJ now leading on the T side of New Carry and that's not what I expected coming into this first half. We knew this would be competitive but heroic looking like the ones on the back foot right now. And yeah, one, one of the, 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 the kind of sadder things about it is for me with this heroic squad, the, the real recipe to their success is Kadian having a good game. I think he is, I think Maniac put it very, very well, a catalyst player in the sense that when, when he's feeling it, when he's doing well, he's so loud, he amps you up, he makes you feel that emotion. And if he's quiet, then you feel it, he's quiet, right? And, uh, and here he's having a blinder of a game. And, and the rest of the guys are, are stepping up around him. It is just like SJ are doing a stellar job, pound for pound, of matching this firepower on the side of Heroic. And this round, no exception. They get Maggie down through the vents again. And Arvid, even dealing with Stown there on his attempted aggressive play into the hut. That man's been removed. And now with two kills found on the back of these aggressive plays from Heroic, 
SJ very much in the driver's seat and they know it. Yeah, it's just Pug stomping right now and they've got to play a trap to the back of A as well. They're going to get rid of him. Caron finding s -Pag with a smoke in his favor. Borup back of the site. Got to do it all here as they try and get closer through the smoke. He's got one doubling up. Borup with a low player coming third. Borup won't stop. Bomb dropped. One left and he's trying to grab a gun to finish off the frag but the pistol will do instead. And what a saving grace. Heroic needed that play. Four kills on the top site and a seventh round solidified. Man, and that's the thing, this is so wild. It's been so back and forth all game long. And now it continues, seven to seven. A heroic round from Borup, if you pardon the pun. I really didn't mean that, that was uh, gross. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, a chance to win out the half now presenting itself to the Danes. It's not gonna be easy, this entire game is just been a grind. Oh, mother of all but anxiety. <laughs> He shut Kadian down, a uh, pin cushion over in Hut. 106 in 34. That was like three players just spamming the wall. And the worst part is Kadian was trapped by the molly and he got to a point where he's like 20 health and he either has to stand still and die to the wall bang or run through a molly. And you know, neither option is really great there. So it will be the former that takes him down. What an opening kill to start. Or going to be taken by Stown. Snappy, he's dedicated, he's committed, and he has to get a kill for this spot. He does, only one though, and the trade is imminent. Rotation from the AWP keeps things even now. And Stown, smart decision to back out of the ramp room, giving them the control down towards B if they want, but it might not be B, because Caron is still up in mini. He's found a timing. Stown, scoped in on the door, is dead. And now only one man left on that A site, but he's also been spotted. Borup, he's got to do it again, but Yampi won't let him. And S-Tag's now alone, he's too far away. Yeah, he's got to try and pull off this 1v3, and S-Tag has been struggling to kickstart this map. SJ, not going to give him anything, and he's waiting for this smoke in Mini to dissipate. He's lining up one of his own to try and cancel out this, uh, this squeaky player, and at least he's managed that with the smoke now going in. Gives him the one-on-one -on -one into the bomb site, but it doesn't come through. SJ, they win out the half narrowly so, but this is split right down the middle. Join us for the second half after a quick break. Don't go anywhere. The Finns sitting 8-7 up at the end of the first half. The T side of Nuke look ferocious, and we're going to have to see if their defense can stand the test of time. We've got Danes on the other side now attacking here on Nuke, and, well, they're going to be comfortable as well here on this map. So fast day play seems to be the name of the game for Heroic. Quick mollies on top of the hut, and everyone diving in. Oh, Arvid caught out, and oh, immediately dealt with both players inside of the site falling. In the opening couple of seconds here for SJ, that bomb plant now down and Heroic looking good in the post plant. SJ have to try and retake this site 3v5, never easy. And it's made even harder still with a little bit of utility on S tag to try and deny these sight lines even further. Ooh. Yampi will get tagged, but will put one in the grave before he's dealt with. As down and S tag trade that out. Zati trying to at least make this an amicable end to the round. Will get put in the ground and Heroic get that pistol round. Eight to eight. And uh, now a chance to bound themselves into the lead here for the Danes. They'll stay afloat. Yeah, four spy from the CTs though. They want to keep this one close, Harry. They don't want to concede the lead just about now, but uh, they might not have the choice. One SMG and four pistols in round number 17. We've got the pretty decent buy for Heroic. All rifles apart from Snappy. It's odds tightening up. Odds to spam towards that A site early, but not quite catching that A to push close towards the door. He'll actually be able to escape. making sure that they aren't, you know, giving him his own medicine. Those vent dives that SJ abused so much on the T side. Hero going to go back towards spawn. This is very standard nowadays. Go inside the lobby, show presence, deny any aggression. Make sure your CT, the CTs don't have too much info and then throw those smokes. Even if you don't commit behind them, well, these Ts don't know that, but they might now with no red box cross smoke even though there's no one down in secret, Jampy can see that no one's crossed. So this is still info that SJ have and Heroic are going to go bounding into A. 
Yeah, Static's up here on top of the hut. He's dead in hand, but he's just moved into the path of that Molotov and has to get on down. We'll really remove one through the smoke and it's a bit chaotic. It's a bit of a mess. And now an AK has found its way into Yampi's hands. 35 seconds as Heroic try and switch this up. They see a lot of bodies over towards that A side of the map. So they take the ramp room. Moro maybe getting a bit too big for his boots there as he does get removed down in hell. They'll drop into the B bomb site now with this ramp control. But Yampi is already here. AK in hand. And the man that we've been looked to keep an eye on all event long. Now in with a chance to shut this round down. S tag removed. Moved and Snappy throwing into this clutch. Oh, it's close, but Snappy's gonna get it. Heroic, they'll take that into eco round and they'll get a ninth up on the board. It comes down to the wire though. Just about goes in favor of the Danes. Money's not great for SJ, obviously, with that decision to force by coming in. And as a result, likely just gonna be the pistols here. So Heroic, that they mitigate uh, any chance of too much damage occurring in that round there by now having a chance to keep this one clean. And that's kind of what they're, what they're going to need to do, I think, if you want to keep this strong T side up. You know, you still fully invest into this round. You've got to rebuy on almost everybody. A lot of Mac 10s in play. And you're hoping that they can make some money here if you're Heroic. Just a stalemate right now though, SJ not wanting to push into the lobby and give kills to patient T players. Rather wait for Heroic to make that initial contact and they will down towards ramp likely with two players already set up radio side. Walking into A here would be a bit of a risk for Heroic, but they know luckily they're not up against too many weapons. So even if there was a stack, they should be able to trade effectively and maybe even more so than that flashes in Cadian's the first man to the seam it sounds going to steal the kills away two for him and there's the sight and the round gone for sj it's just a single nade on zarte it's not going to get a kill no matter where it lands and yeah that's nice just cleaning it up with a one tag s tag getting his feet back in the water and that'll be a tenth round for heroic now the buy coming back in for super jimmy and a chance to stop this streak before it happens Critically, that AWP is coming out straight away for the SJ side. And, and there, there is no AWP in sight or even in the minds of Heroic yet. They don't have the money for it. So I, I, I just can't wait to see how this DT side AWP is looking. Yampi's playing with that up in heaven right now. He's going to be that swing player in rotation between the, uh, the ramp room and outside if needed. And they've even set... A man up. It looked like they were going to go down towards B early, but actually they, they decided against that and now they've fallen back into the ramp front. So ignore me. And uh, that looks to be the right call to have made. Heroic. Still with a lot of players over in lobby. Yet to really show any presence or love toward this B bomb site in this round. Still plenty of time left on this clock. But with nades getting lined up and all these Mac 10s in play. I was going to say, it might just be the A play. Now with that smoke going in, there must be a temptation to vent dive here if you're heroic. Sadix is watching it though. He's got his eyes on it. Going to move away towards the hut and let a player get down vents. That has to be info that SJ are aware of. They've got to be one step ahead here. Kadian making noise on B. His teammates have come to join him with the bomb as well. Zarte throwing in grenades to try and soften up these targets for later, but little damage to find. Kadian's up. Zarte checks it. Good awareness. Arthur with a kill as well. And uh, this bomb trying to cross towards the site, but it will surely get denied with Sati moving in, he's even finished off the round through the smoke. And that will be SJ finding the first CT rifle round in this half. Not letting Heroic get too big for their boots early on. And, you know, I like that play, allowing the vent dive. As long as you've got, you know, the info and the rotations, it's, it's, it's fine to let players down into B. The difference was when Heroic were on the CT side, it was players getting down to B that they didn't know about. And that's when it creates problems. But if you, uh, if you allow those T's down, you can play off the back of that. Up until now, Heroic have just about been keeping themselves afloat. The Great Danes doggy paddling right now. However, some fins arriving in the waters, and that there is terrifying. Shark v. Dog, I know who wins there, at least in the ocean. <laughs> On ground, that'd be a... Yeah, a very different story. A fair, then. I don't a fair know. matchup. Yeah. You know, the shark just withering and, and dying. <laughs> 
but focusing on this one, Yampi, he's got this up. There's a wall of smoke down, oh. and Zani just goes spraying on through. Oh, they even line up as well. Even more damage done outside. This is just a disaster for Heroic. They thought they had this foothold. They thought they paid the path towards the outside of the map, but it was a path to peril. S-Tag doubling up in with another. Still trying to recover this bomb. Still trying to give Heroic a chance in this round. And with that smoke, he's at least cut the AWP off. Yeah, Jampi really wanted that shot there. Really wanted to kill the crossing player. Stown is out the door. And I don't know if Arvid's realized this. He knows about the possibility, but Stown going to walk in without checking it. And Arvid in the back lines gets away with that frag. S-Tag now alone. Bot coming through and Jampi's going to nail the shot. Great stuff by SJ. Even Caron as well, who's been a quiet player this game, getting a six uh, transfer outside onto two players playing close mini. Here it was. Those were massive kills assisted by the flashbang of Yampi as well. And now 10-10 equaled up. Even Stevens, SJ onto double digits and Heroic, they've got to take an eco. And so at first, I thought we were going to see a slow round where they try and bait all this utility out, but no, they get a player deep within mini. Oh, and no. oh it's S Tag doubling up. He was a very, very quiet man all first half long, but in this second one, he's been putting up numbers. Finally, they put him down, but he's got three kills with only that P250. He's made this round a terrifying one. SJ, they've got to give it a go. They've got to try and attempt it at least. But now losing that AWP, losing Yampi up in heaven, this is all falling apart and Snappy's even put down that last man with just pistols, the Finns, they managed to, uh, well not the Finns rather, with the, the Danes managed to lock that one in. The Finns falling apart there up against the might of this P250 on S-Tag. Yeah, what a play, man. Great shots from S-Tag and even finds a third with the M4 as well. You, you, you know, when you have a player who can just come out and do that in the middle of nowhere in an eco round at 10-10, that is going to flip the momentum of this game, Harry, heavily. The money is still there, of course, for SJ to buy up, but only just enough. Even then, they're not going to have five rifles, so... S-Tag's P250 kills really come into effect when it comes down to the economy. That could keep Heroic in the lead for days to come. And a quick tactical pause from the Danes before we get back into things. Cadian's even on the AWP as well. And Jampi is going to be up and against him in this round. And especially T-side, especially at this stage in the game, if you're able to take control of the money, if you leave SJ, always just hamstrung for these buys heading into the rifles. That, that there is how you just dominate a second half on Nuke. And so a huge round to have been found. Can they continue? If they get this one, it could all fall into place for Heroic. And a fast play outside, a wall of smokes to complement it. It's got these players down through secret, but they're not looking to commit to be just yet. Yeah, smoked off. May as well hang around and watch their backsides because that smoke outside has faded and SJ could flank. They could come in late and try and kill these secret players, but that's not going to be the case. Just holding on to top site right now. Yampi, that smoke comes out. He needs to be aware of it. They're trying to get Kadian down to cross as well. Actually, no, they're trying to get out. They're going to boost up. Yampi's blind. He can't see them. He falls off, luckily, because of the flashbang, and they won't be able to take him down from the boost, but they will be able to take control towards Garage. Sadex can't stop them. Neither can Yampi with another missed shot on this AWP. And Heroic are closing the distance. You only get so many chances to back up here if you are in the ramp room. And now Heroic climbing up and above towards heaven. Arvid has to be aware of this. Yeah, he's just checked down the ladder. So that means he can dedicate all of his attention now to holding this upper push. And that's because Yampi is holding down hell. Arvid needs to win this fight and win it he shall. The Ampy's even rotated up. They've doubled up in the heavens. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's chaos. It's chaos. But there is the kill going the way of SJ. Arvid with three. The hat trick from the heavens. S tag and Snappy. This round might just elude heroic unless these two can do the impossible and make this 2v5 a reality. Hey, bomb plant's good. That's a bit of money. But S tag wants to stay alive so he can actually play in for this post plant. Snappy. He's cut off the vents, and s has got two. This could still be winnable. Snappy's in a viable position now in a one-on-three, and he might have a vent drop as well that could be his kill every day of the week. Will it be delayed?
delayed though. They're already on the bomb. They're tapping it. They're trying to force Snappy off of the angle, but he's so committed and he gets a kill from it. Great read. Snappy's on two. And even though he's low, there's another chance. It's Champy sticking the bomb. Ten, se uh, five second defuse. Snappy spots it, but it's a defuse in for SJ. And a wild round that the Finns will pick up. Snappy, despite him and S-Tag's best efforts, they cannot close the two on five. And what a heartbreaking way to have that slip through your fingers. If you are snappy in that situation there, right? You believe with those two bait peaks with the flashbang going in that he was going to get off that bomb. And snappy had already delivered so much in that round, right? Not only getting those kills, not only making it feel doable, but getting the bomb plant, helping out the money situation for Heroic. He makes it feel so, so doable. And Yampi really, uh, really spices things up as well. You know, he has the yeah. open hand, so he's just, he's just right clicking the whole time he's diffusing. And that means, you know, if you're snappy, you're not sure if he's scoping in on your angle and getting ready to deal with you, or if he is still sticking that bomb. I do think, you know, when you're going for a play like that, when you are just holding the E button, grabbing the defuse, AWP or Krieg, two of the best guns to have, because you can just fake the, uh, the scope in yeah. to give that audio cue. I've, I've always wondered about the double bluff. You know when players drop pistols when they defuse? What about tapping the bomb and then dropping your pistol? Not sticking it, but it just seems like you're sticking it and trying to make up for that noise. I've always wanted to see a player get away with that really mind game. It's a kind of thing that would only work against the best in the world, but... We'd have to wait and see, Harry. Either way, I mean, what a what a stick, what a defuse, and what a round for Super Jimmy to close out. Remember, that started with two pistols on both Karen and Sadix. So it wasn't exactly a round SJ sh should have been winning in the first place. In fact, the heroic bring it back from a two on five is credit to them, but it might go unnoticed if this round is if this game is lost. 11-11. Economy on the line for both sides. Smokes again out towards the yard and Caron's spotting down on B. They don't know if anyone's crossing behind them and Borup will alone. Oh. Oh dear. Must have been a gap. Wow, that looked like it could have been something for Heroic to work with, but <laughs> instead it's been turned against them. And now they sit a man down. They've got to try and... Uh... Look for this equalizer sometime soon. Sound is just homed in on this position. Oh, he's actually decided against it. And that just might be their undoing because it's allowed Arvid to slip this knife into the back of Heroic. Only Kadian left. And while he gets away with that Kraken Deeg shot into heaven, that's not going to be enough. That's nothing for Heroic to hold on to. Kadian. At this point, 20 seconds, he just wants to die. And luckily enough, one man will deliver that to him. Zarty's going to burn him out. But it is still Super Jimmy taking the lead now. 12 to 11. No money left for Heroic. And this situation that Heroic <gasps> get themselves into after... Oh, uh, oh my goodness. That's so that's unfortunate. That's gross. Because yeah, I was looking at the minimap and I was seeing there was a smoke down with no gap and I was very confused as to how he got that shot off. But that's everything. That's the Lurk player down on B selling the fake that would have forced Karen back and affected that topside setup. So sometimes, Harry, just a little bit of luck sprinkled in the right place can be all you need to win a round. Oh, dear. Yeah. Does that even see smoke every time? Where we see a smoke, he sees opportunity. And this round, they try and overwhelm the orb. But there's a nice little double setup being run between Sadix and Yampi down in hell. So it does not come through. A 13th on the board. That round is kept flawless for the Finns. And now money back in for Heroic. An investment behind it. Krieg for Kadian. No orb in sight. They don't have the money for one over on this T side. And that situation, if you remember, when S-Tag gets those two P250 kills and it's heroic in the lead, they've got, they've got SG's money down on the back foot. We were saying they were in a great spot to win the game. Well, now it's the Finns in that pole position. They've got cash. They've broken the money of heroic. They're in the lead. And a victory here, well, that could be enough to push them over the line. Yeah, Borup just tucked tail and ran down secret this time. Uh, Passo smokes. He does not want to get caught with a random shot. Running and gunning his way down towards that B-bomb site. Heroic. Boosting at the back here as that smoke fades. This is a bit of an off position, off angle. But uh, got to worry about Sadix, who's moving in. And that's a kill. That's a great one for Heroic. They can just rush top site off the back of that with an instant reaction. Four players in lobby ready to bring the fight. And a fight they shall. Snappy dropping Arvid at the back of the site. That B player, Borup, is gone to Caron. But it's still a three on four. And that plant's about to come in.
Oh, flash for Yampi to take this. Oh. oh, both players were blind, but he's not quite able to connect it. Doesn't want to go too deep. Doesn't want to risk getting caught out. SJ, they still want to give this one a go. They want to give it a look in. Yampi's going to line up this flashbang to try and allow this peek, and they go running in. The Molotov's doing even more damage. And even though they forced all of these players out of the site and into different positions, into the open, none of the kills come through. And at the end of the day, that's the thing that matters to SJ in that situation there. Yampi's got to try and hold on to the AWP. He should at least get away with it, right? Heroic, they're not really feeling the urge to hunt at this point in time. They know the money's fine on the other side of things. And, and they want to build up a bank of their own. So they're just going to bow out of this one. A 12th round on the board. And oh my, this second series, this second map is uh, looking like it's one that could go the distance at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, it's already on 26, Harry. What's 30 at this point? And with the money there for SJ, at least they can continue to buy up. They're not getting broken immediately by the first round win from Heroic in a few. Heroic, since that 3-0 lead on the uh, first half, or the first three rounds of this half, they have not been able to put concurrent rounds together. They are only one off. So let's hope that that streak gets broken here. Breaking the money as well of SJ. Smokes again to feign a B play, event dive potentially, but really we've had none of that from Heroic. They're playing far more regimented and very much just grouping and playing off the back of their early kills. Borup again lurking a yard side. Caron's pushed behind red. Smokes getting lined up from Heroic. Full execute. These are deeper smokes. These are ones that are going to let them cross closer towards Mini and even play the, uh, the garage if they want to. Let's see if Caron lets them though as he waits. Oh no, Tower on him with two before he's dealt with there by Snappy. They discount that red position and they might come to regret it. They've lost the man, they sat a man down now. Borup looking for this equalizer, crossing through that smoke into garage. Yampi does not seem aware of that prospect just yet. He's holding for this cross out from red. Ooh, up oh. on top and a quick flick there. That snappy now removed as well. Another one hitting the deck for Heroic. Stown and Borup, two names that are synonymous with success for this Heroic squad. Left to try and make this 2v4 happen and they've dealt with the first man. Borup has slowly but surely closed the distance onto this oh. one. But it doesn't matter because Yampi is quick <laughs> and you only get that one chance onto the AWP. He will smite him down in return. That all falls apart for Heroic. The crazy part about that is Yampi was meant to be covered, right? You know how he's not aware that there's someone in garage. Well, luckily, Sadix was tasked with holding the cross from main. Sadix has to turn around to trade his teammate and kill Stan, which allows Borob to get up close. Yampi should always be dead in that position, but an absolutely killer shot. And it has kept SJ with everything to play for. Another opening frag as well. Heroic diving down B through the vents, but that has been telegraphed. That is more than, uh, you know, clear to SJ. Bomb plant even coming through, but Heroic have only one player. Now now two on this lower site. So this retake is going to be very easy for SJ if they can find these lurking T's. Waiting for the time to strike. No rush to get on this defuse. Stown though, he hasn't been checked yet. Oh, and he'll get away with one. And now this situation that once looked so good for SJ, so doable has suddenly turned against them. They're gonna push on in. They Molotov Borum oh. out into the open, and Arvid trying to deal with these two players on the lurk. They're sticking it, they're on it. They get Sadix off with a bomb, and with it, Heroic, they've kept this dream alive. A 13th on the board. They just about recover that one there. What a back and forth game. What a back and forth round. I mean, this is, this feels like it's anyone's game. And I think, you know, for Super Jimmy, that there is a feat in and of itself, right? To make this one feel like this is an even matchup when on paper, Heroic should be the pretty clean favorites. Yeah, that's the crazy part about getting those B plants when you only have one player down on B or, or maybe even two at a max. Is you, you still want all those lurkers top site. And so when SJ try and rotate down towards B, if they don't jump on that bomb immediately, they might get caught by players in yard, by players coming right ramp. And that's exactly what happens. Snappy getting crucial frags in the yard. Another vent dive from Stown. Actually, not a dive. He's just going to sit close towards it, trying to cover for that top hut or heaven position. No one showing anything though. Sadix is going to move up. That could be good for him considering the smoke might play in his favor. Oh, he seems aware and he's got the read. He's going to get the kill. Massive opening frag. 
as this would be map and match point for SJ if they can pick up this round. Four kills stand in the way of them doing exactly that and Heroic back to these outside smokes, back to the B play. Oh, but there's the gap in uh -oh. that. Uh -oh. oh dear, Yampi's gonna try and exploit it very fast on the trigger and Borup's moving just a tad too slowly. That kill's gifted the way of SJ and now Heroic Three players left up. They'll try and get down into B, but that smoke has already held them back. They oh. go straight through. They waste no time. Are they ready for a second man in the vent? I think they did oh. see him. And they'll go back in for more. Now a three on three from a five on three in favor of SJ to even odds across the board. Heroic trying to find solace in this B bomb site, but there's already players here. Oh no, this could be back to back three on fives, one by Heroic. They did it in the previous round. Orp getting picked up from Zarfi, but he's getting mollied off and now down to 20. Almost out of this round at this point. It's up to Arvid, who has come down through Seeker. He might be able to stop the bomb. 10 seconds left, they're planting open. This could be his round, he's done it. Seven seconds, just needs to stay alive as he runs back into the vents and that is gonna be it. SJ shut it down in the final few seconds and get themselves 15. No cover for that bomb plant, no round for Heroic. And oh my word, that there, that can be the straw that broke the camel's back for the Heroic squad. I mean, they do everything to make a five on three feel doable. They get the B-bomb site control. They have a man advantage at 3v2. And in the final seven seconds of the round, all that hard work, all that graft that they put in, it's just snatched away from them. And now they've really got to dig deep if they want to get back into this. They need two rounds to force an overtime here. And it's all gonna start with this one, this four spy featuring just two Kriegs. And that is it. Ooh. You still don't wanna count them out, Harry, after everything this game has shown us. Still no back-to-back -back rounds for Heroic on this T side since that opening three. And, well, that needs to be broken. Arcadius. Oh, he's getting dinged through the smoke. The grenades to follow as well. More damage to be painted through. Zarta getting aggressive off the back of this as well. That's a big risk, but it's going to be more of a reward at this point. Heroic not looking interested in ramp, but as I say that, they double back with the bomb. Down, looking for this pick. Luckily, Zarte has fallen back more passive, and Yampi will be able to rotate quickly from heaven to come and assist, it, assist if need be. Oh, but it's not the ramp commitment. Down is just going to hold this angle. Valuable one to have as now they've kept the player trapped at the ramp room. Stown's even going to finish things off. So now 35 seconds heroic. They might even have a change of heart here. This still feels like the A commitment with a player outside ready to wrap into Mini. A lot of it's going to come oh. down with KD and can find that kill. And he cannot. Heroic, what do they do? They've got 20 seconds. They've oh. got to go. They've got to pick up the pace. Sounds come in on this wrap. And Arvid, his attention is divided. He's got to try and do it all now from inside of the A bomb site. And he's oh no! Him. He's got around this side. Arvid has snatched it away again from Heroic and SJ Super Jimmy. They're going to take this one in their stride. Monstrous performance from Yampi, from the players who wanted to see. But also, I think Arvid has to have a mention. So many big clutches, so many high impact kills. And uh, I mean, just what a performance from the Finns. Yeah, that was so much fun. Super Jimmy really showing up on the stage here versus Heroic, a team that we expect to make a run to likely even be in the final here. Well, they're going to get knocked down to the 0-1 in this group. That is not the position the Danes want to be in uh, with sick performances from Yampi and the likes. Even Snappy, the uh, in-game leader for Heroic, top of the scoreboard for them as well. And while that's a good thing, obviously, it does definitely show that some of the players weren't feeling the warmest coming into that day. Look at, you know, the likes of S-Tag who started the map off you know, 3 and 15 or something at the end of the first half. He pulled it back, yes, but could it have been the slow start that put Heroic on the back foot? Yeah, the that, that is kind of going to be one of the caveats over this game, right? Is like maybe if things had just fallen into place a little bit sooner for Heroic, it could have been a different story, but we know, we know how that panned out. And a bunch of people who were watching diligently as ever were uh, our analysts over on the desk along with Connor Gervin. What did you three make of that? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited we've got a little bit more competition in Group B. You know, if anyone was going to get written off, it was supposed to be SJ, and they have proven everybody wrong.
Yeah, once again, Heroic uh, leaving the very sad best of one opening. You get surprised. Lucky for them, the best of three is going to be a next game for them. So it's okay. They're not quite, you know, <laughs> if they had not a best of one coming up, I'd be very scared. But what a game from Aestri. Uh, very impressive. We we sat here, we said, oh, actually, no, Nuke's probably a good map for Heroic. But damn, Her Aestri, they can play the map. <laughs> right. They definitely could, and you could see it on their CT side specifically. Yampi and KHRN towards that outside yard. We saw two or three instances where, where KHRN was able to get two two or three blind kills because Yompi was just chunking the flash all the way yeah. across the map. And the coordination and teamwork, you could absolutely see it coming out of the SJ side. Multiple rounds where he's getting multiple kills because of the same flash and like smoke push setup. So just really nice getting into it. And, and before that game even started, you know, I had the praise for Heroic's outer play. And there were some really nice slow rounds where they were working smokes with flashing off heaven to get to get all that control. And you saw SJ kind of like creep into the bomb site and look to hold on in those last 20 seconds. Matt's here. We look at last some of those last few rounds. They were decided in the final 20 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Which makes this victory even more impressive to me, right? Because sure. I could see, I could see a world where SJ just surprises Heroic right off the bat, 16-6. You can feel like Heroic never got into the game, and I could understand that. No, 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 no. Here it's a very tight game with clutches, with decision, split-second decision. And in that corner, I have to talk about Arvid. Uh, Arvid has impressed me so much. We have seen it round after round. Key moments, eight seconds left, opens the door, gets the bomb, realizes, you know what, I've done my job. I, ju I just have to survive now. Leaving again, he did the same inside on the last round. A player that I really didn't expect that much from him. But, sure. Wow, he is... He was so fast to think, and he made the right decision almost every time. Right. So Arvid, a nice surprise, but when we talk about expectations in SJ, I think the conversation falls to Jampy. So it's good that we have him here for the oh. winner's interview. Jampy, are you with us? Yes. Yeah, how you feeling, man? Hot win, opening the uh, Group B, must feel good. Yeah, it feels awesome. Excellent, man. Uh, there's a lot of talk around you. I think that uh, you're one of the talking points for this SJ lineup, and it was really cool watching you guys make waves at the Arctic Invitational. How good does it feel to be here at DreamHack Open through the finish qualifier and, and ready to take down some, some bigger names? Feels great, because I think we lost a very tight match against Crazy at the Arctic. It was like 16-14 the last map, and it like really got us down, but it's good that we got the revenge now on the like one of the top 20 teams, and we are very happy about this. Yeah, big time. Yampi, you guys have been a team for over a year now, and we haven't seen you guys competing in the open circuit throughout all of 2019. What was your and your team's expectations coming into this tournament? I think very good. I think we don't, haven't shown our potential uh, yet in the like uh, online games, and we always play better against like much higher opponents than we play against like our style like opponents but i don't know it just feels good it was uh you know i think i personally i'm a big fan of heroics t side on on nuke and i like the way that they play outer you really shut that down with the op so i just wanted to say props for that man it's, it's nice Thank to you. see you come into this event with that bar kind of set and uh not to crumble under the pressure so congrats and uh last quick question you guys will be facing off versus the winner of god sent versus crazy you brought up that arctic invitational yeah. bo3 do you want that crazy matchup today of course yeah nice to see it so good luck with that man prepare Thank for your you. game we'll talk to you later thanks all right what a kid I, I like what i've seen from him obviously i mean the numbers are really high yeah. right the 25 26 pack probably yeah. but like I just like the reaction. He has a, a little bit of simple to it when the yeah, way he flicks up, when he's flicks. under ladder and he sees the one jumping from the Xbox and like jumping fast, and then the same one on the corner. He has that, that you know, fast That 18 year old yeah. reactions, man. Probably he's just younger than me. <laughs> I think that's what it is. He is. Just, just younger than us. Sure enough. You know what I like? He's well spoken. There's not a lot of young players who have that kind of conversation behind them about their skill ceiling and their possibilities that can also back it up with some professional manners. So for him to be taking a winner's interview, first time at a DreamHack Open, that earns some more respect for me. Definitely so. And I think if I'm heroic here, I'm a little bit worried about their uh, their disconnect that I noticed on their T side of Nuke. When we think about heroic, we're always commending their teamwork and their ability to just wait to the last second. We mentioned that it came down to the wire in those last few rounds, but I noticed on the outside yard, they, they made it all the way to that Raptor side on multiple occasions, but it was so disconnected. We had Stavin going through the Raptor, getting picked off, and Kadian coming in with the op to try to trade him like 10 seconds later. And mm. this kind of disconnect, it's just not something we're used to seeing from Heroic. Sure enough. Well, Heroic, they're going to be finding themselves down in that loser's B03 tomorrow. And it's a scary prospect, seeing as their potential opponents do fall onto either Godsent or Crazy. But we'll be swapping back over to Group A, where we'll have our second matchup there. It is Fours versus Tricked after the break.